This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. And my guest today is John Sales, uh, the CEO of the Vermont Food Bank. And uh, John has been uh, a guest on Positively uh, Vermont in the past, uh, but considering uh, the situation that everyone's going through with the virus, I thought it'd be a good idea to get John back to explain uh, what the Vermont uh, Food Bank is doing and more importantly, what we do in Positively Vermont, uh, how our viewers can help. So let me begin, John, by um, telling us, asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your background, and uh, what your role is at the Vermont Food Bank. Sure, Dennis. I'm the CEO at the Food Bank. I've been with the Food Bank for 11 years now. Uh, before that, I moved to Vermont in, in 1999 and worked for the state for almost 10 years doing utility regulation at the Department of Public Service, and then at the Agency of Natural Resources, where I was last the Deputy Secretary. Um, and I got this great opportunity to, uh, to start a second, another phase of my life at the Food Bank and continue to serve Vermonters um, and in a really profound way. So I'm very happy to be here. Great. And could you describe what the Food Bank uh, uh, consists of, how, how it, uh, the scope and the size and what its mission is? Sure, thanks. The, the Vermont Food Bank is, we like to say, we're the only food bank in Vermont. Normal times, you know, about 150,000, almost one in four Vermonters, through a network of independent organizations that are food shelves and meal sites, um, senior centers, homeless shelters, after school programs, all across the state. And those, we call them network partners. There's about 215 or 220. In addition to that, the food bank does direct distribution through our Veggie Van Gogh program and to senior housing sites across the, the state. So Veggie Van Gogh is a, uh, like a free farmer's market that we do at schools and hospitals uh, either uh, every other week or once a month, again, all over the state. Um, the food bank's been around since the mid '80s, and uh, you know, unfortunately, has seen the need either continue steady or grow during that time. Um, but we're really proud of the work that we've done to to fill that gap for Vermonters that, that really can't afford enough food for their themselves and their households. Now you said that one in four uh, in the population uh, have a need. Uh, uh, a struggle with hunger. Can you describe how that works? Are we talking about working poor? Are we talking about uh, what kind types of demographics are we dealing with? Yeah, really it's, it's anyone who can't afford to put enough healthy food on the table. And it's everyone from, you know, folks who are really struggling, who may be homeless, maybe have mental health or addiction issues, um, really all the way up to, to families who both mom and dad are working um, but, you know, three or four kids or, or single moms, um, you know, we know that, that at least half of the people that we're serving, um, and probably more now, things are different, uh, have somebody working full time in the home. Um, so it, it really is, runs the gamut uh, in Vermont. Now, you have a website, which uh, it's uh, vtfoodbank.org, is that it? Uh, That's right. Okay, because I want to make sure we get that in there because there is lots of information there too. Exactly, and, and um, I know this in that website it says what you do: uh, gather food, share food, nurture people. Uh, how does that work? How, how do you gather? Yeah, the the food bank is you know in some ways to our our network partners we're a support organization, but also a source of food. So we get food from a number of sources. Last year. It was about 12 million pounds. Um, starting in March, we've, we're running at 70% or more over that. So um, I think this year is going to be, um, you know, a record breaker. Um, but so we source that food. It comes from donations from the grocery industry and food manufacturers and distributors, both in Vermont and across the country through our national organization, Feeding America. Uh, we run two federal food programs, where a little less than a third of our food comes in through that. And we can't get enough donated or, or food from the, the government. And so we have to purchase a lot of food too. Um, that's probably about 20% of the food that the food bank distributes. 
Um, a lot of food also comes from our local farmers. Uh, lots of really any farm of any size pretty much either donates to the Vermont Food Bank directly or to one of our network partners, the food shelves and meal sites in their local communities. We, we love to support our local farmers and uh, the food bank also purchases um, pretty large quantities of food from local farmers. In fact, this year um, we had, we had uh, dedicated some additional funds to purchasing local food and now with the coronavirus, we've gotten some support from the state to really ramp that up. So we're, we're excited to support our local farmers and make sure that, that folks who, who are having trouble affording food for their family now are, are getting some of that local food also. That's great. Well, actually, what we'd like to focus on now is, uh, in fact, your website says right on the top, ensuring all are fed during the coronavirus. And can you tell, tell us how this first started to impact Operation. It's, how it's impacting today. Yeah, it's turned things completely upside down. The way I've, I've been describing it is, is we're rebuilding our total business model on the fly. You know, starting in mid-March, when it became apparent that this was going to hit and hit us hard, the first thing the food bank did was just start ordering food. Um, you know, the lead time to get uh, truckloads of food delivered is, is weeks and sometimes several months. And so we knew we had to get orders in and we did that immediately um, and continue to do that throughout this. Um, and, and then we had to figure out immediately, you know, our whole system is based on choice, on people being able to go to a food shelf or a meal site or come to a Veggie Van Gogh to, to, to get together as, as people and share food and we can't do that anymore. Everything had to become distanced and everything needs to be um, safe, um, obviously. So we've everything shifted to grab and go. So pre-packing instead of going to a food shelf for the veggie van go and shopping for what you might want, uh, bags of food are put together and then handed out either into cars or a lot of food shelves like set out on the porch. So people can come and grab them. Um, and it's a, it's a very, very different way, very more, um, much more intensive way to distribute food. But on the other side, we also had to be very careful about volunteers. So we couldn't just put out the call for, you know, dozens or, or hundreds of new volunteers. We have to make sure, again, that the volunteers that are working either at distribution sites or at our three distribution centers in Barrie, Rutland, or Brattleboro, um, are safe and have the personal protective equipment that they need. Um, so it, it's really, it's a, a shift that's still taking place um, as we figure things out. And in addition, you know, tens of thousands of people in Vermont lost their jobs. Um, and, and frankly, it was weeks, if not months, before a lot of people were getting unemployment benefits. And the food bank needed to be there immediately to make sure that people have food on the table. Um, and you know we can talk about all the things we did to to make sure and are still doing to make sure that that's happening. Well, obviously, uh, ha has the, the need the population that you had been serving that's gone up, I suppose, uh, because of the layoffs and because of uh, all the other like senior centers not having nutrition programs available, people it, it not being able to get together. So, how how big is your uh, clientele, so to speak, jump in the last few months? Yeah, we know, we know there's actually been some research done um, at, at UVM. They did some research and showed in the first few weeks that it was about a third more people were food insecure and needed help getting food on the table. Um, there was some research done by Feeding America. Again, um, that's a little more updated and now shows that about 46% increase in the number of people. And that's consistent with what we've been seeing of the people coming and, and getting food at network partners and at the, the food distributions. In addition to that, um, uh, Dennis, the childhood food insecurity has increased by 60%. You think about all those um, single moms or, or families who were, were struggling already uh, or you know, having a hard time putting those, those ends together and then one or both of the parents loses their job. Um, it's just really devastating and, and we have to make sure that the the kids get fed. So we're, we're continuing to see that level of, 
of need in the community, and frankly, a little concerned now with the enhanced uh, unemployment benefits expiring at the end of this month and the, the PPP loans kind of being played out, um, the, they're in effect running out unless Congress reauthorizes that in another round. So um, we're, we're not hoping but expecting um, to see another surge in, in need, not only in Vermont, but across the country. And how, how is the uh, closure of schools impacted on your ability to provide food for children? You know, there's, there's, there's been so much, so much happening, you know, with the schools have been enormous, um, their response. So schools closed in March and with it, the school meals programs. And a lot of kids, particularly those that get the, the free meals through the federal government program, uh, that can be the only real balanced meal of the day. Um, and what we saw was the schools stepping up in a huge way. Um, almost every school in Vermont continued their meal program. Uh, some of them you wouldn't go to the school and pick up your meal. Um, some of those that had, had bus service for picking up kids, the buses were still paid for. And so the schools used the buses and the bus routes to deliver meals. And you could drive around the back roads of Vermont and see coolers sitting at the mailboxes at the end of a driveway. And that's where the buses were dropping off two or three meals for each kid in the household. Um, we found that the schools that were distributing their meals through, through bus routes, um, were seeing an actual, actually an increase in the number of meals that they were serving every day from during the school year. Those schools that had pickup, they saw a decrease in the number of meals. Now school is over, um, and those, most of those deliveries have stopped. A few places are still going. Um, most of the schools have continued serving meals under a different federal program. Um, and uh, you know, kudos to our State Agency of Education and some of the key staff there, um, and our friends at Hunger Free Vermont, who worked really hard to get the waivers that we needed to make sure that the federal government continued subsidizing and really paying for the food for those meals that, are, that continue to go out over the summer. And unlike during the school year, uh, the, the, any student under the age of 18, and really any kid under the age of 18, is eligible for these meals. You do not have to be enrolled in the school meal program to get these meals, um, which is really important for those families where they've lost income and lost work um, and just really didn't, don't have the time or the resources to enroll in that program. What about uh, your volunteers? Uh, how how is this impacted on the, your, your needs? Yeah, you know, because we're serving your volunteers. Yeah, you know, volunteers. Like I said, at, at our distribution centers, it's been it's been challenging because we had volunteers before that were close together and sorting food. Uh, we've been able to figure it out, but the the need for volunteers at these food distributions at the schools and the other distribution sites um, is still there. And uh, you know people can find volunteer opportunities on the Food Bank's website. And the state also has a volunteer portal that can connect you to opportunities all over the state. There, there are other things happening now. Um, and things are happening so fast. I feel like I'm passing over two thirds of, of what's been going on in the food world. I can imagine. I, I've seen some local churches that have uh, signs or food banks or, or food distribution. Now, what, what types of foods are, are you working with, uh, perhaps even more right now, uh, to fulfill your ordinary program uh, in light of the uh, problems caused by the virus? Yeah, you know, one of the biggest things that's happened, Dennis, is, is called the Farmers to Families Food Box Program, which, you know, are all, you know, some of the senior centers, as you, as you mentioned, have, are no longer serving meals. And so, so they're not serving the food from the food bank. The other distribution um, places, the schools and the hospitals and the, the food shelves are really making up for, for that lack of, um, of volume. Um, but the Farmers to Families Food Box Program is something that was uh, quickly set up by the federal government and actually is bringing a tremendous, millions and millions of pounds of food into Vermont. You know, before that, we did the working with the Vermont National Guard and the state who really stepped up. 
um, distributed a couple weeks worth of meals ready to eat, FEMA emergency food. Now we knew that wasn't a long-term solution because it's not the greatest quality food, but it was something that was available right away. Um, we've transitioned to these uh, food boxes, which are, are actually very high quality. And it's the Abbey Group, which is a Vermont company, got the contract. Um, there's a box of about 20 pounds of produce. As much as possible of that is local. And the Abbey Group's been sourcing lots of local food to go in there. Um, about seven pounds of cheese in a box. And all that is, is Cabot cheese product and other, um, other local creameries. Um, and then, then there's uh, a couple gallons of milk. Of It's been Vermont milk, Hood Dairy, Thomas Dairy, uh, Monument Dairy. And, um, and then a, a bo couple boxes of, of pre-cooked frozen chicken, which is not Vermont product, but um, it's great to have some protein in those kits. We call it a kit, all that food together. Um, those were at first distributed by the National Guard at state airports. And now we've transitioned for July and August to sites all around the state. There's five fixed sites. And then we're doing three distributions a day and then 20 smaller sites. Um, and you can, you can go on, uh, if you go on our website, you can find the link where you can find out where the, the distributions are going to be and then make a reservation. So to make sure that when you show up that there's food available for you. We don't want people showing up and not having food available. So we're asking people to go through this reservation system. It is anonymous. You do not have to provide any personal information in order to register. Now, we're in July right now, and I suppose uh, in a normal year, you'd be projecting for a, a return to school. And, and again, we often speak at the holiday time, which is, I know, kind of critical, for, at least in terms of people thinking about the food bank and maybe how they can help or maybe how they can help neighbors get some things for the holidays. But how would you look at project if you can, how from July on to the end of this year, uh, things are going to be going? Yeah, I don't project that things are going back to anywhere near normal. Um, and, you know, while, while the, the state and many states and the federal government are looking towards the recovery phase of this, when it comes to food and food insecurity, we're still in the response phase. Um, and I think we will be until the end of the year. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's really about meeting people's immediate needs right now. Um, you know, we're starting to think about what, what's, what are things going to look like in the new year. Um, and it is definitely going to be different. We're going to continue, I think, to see social distancing and, and safety protocols and different ways of distributing food. And we're starting to learn the lessons from what we're doing now to, to see how we can do that more effectively into the future. Um, but right now, this, the, the Farmers to Families program is... Uh, is confirmed through July and August. It's the possibility that we can continue to get this food through the end of December. We'll see there'll be a September, October, and November, December contract, and the USDA will de determine whether or not they're going to uh, renew that contract for those periods. You know, you mentioned uh, the end of the year too, which is not only a, a time when we want to make sure we're serving people who need help, but it's also a time uh, traditionally when people who give help um, donate to the food bank and to other organizations who are doing this work, feeding and housing people around the state. Um, we're, I, am, I am amazed and, and humbled by the philanthropic response, by the number of people who have donated to the Vermont Food Bank and the amounts they've donated. And I, I wanna to say to your audience, thank you so much, because I know there are many people out there who are donors and, and have helped make this possible. You know, the, there was no um, government help at the very beginning in, in March and April, and even beginning into May. And it was the philanthropic response. It was the donors in Vermont who powered um, our response as the food bank and made this happen. Um, the, the federal government and the state government um, using the federal funds has really stepped up. And now we have an opportunity to leverage some of those, uh, those resources. Um, but those will run out. Those are gone at the end of December. 
and, uh, and we're going to flow through a lot of this philanthropic support. And it's really important that we're here for the long run because what we learned in the Great Recession uh, is that that hunger lasts a lot longer, um, much past the recovery. So I'm expecting we're going to see you know another 18 months to two years of of need of uh, increased need for food assistance, um, and and I the food bank is going to be here, and we are going to do everything we can with all of the resources we can gather to make sure that people in Vermont have uh, nourishing and healthy food to eat. That's wonderful. And not, not to dwell on the negative, but uh, the, the fact that the, the situation has been disrupted, the distribution has been disrupted, uh, schools have been disrupted. What, what kind of impact does that have on the overall health uh, of people in Vermont, particularly children, particularly preschool children? Yeah, you know, Research shows it's crystal clear that nutrition has everything to do with your health, everything to do with your um, physical, emotional, and mental development, everything to do with your ability to learn, ability to perform at work, ability to raise your kids. Um, you know, we have to make sure that, that our kids are fed. And to feed the kids, we have to make sure that the families are fed. Um, Likewise, you know, we talk about our older adults in Vermont and making sure that the older adults are not, are not missed. You know, they're oftentimes the ones that are most at risk. And we've seen again and again that older adults are, are you know, afraid to go out and rightfully so. Um, the Meals on Wheels programs across the state um, by the areas agents, area agencies on aging have done a tremendous job and, and they've, you know, uh, increase significantly the number of meals that they're delivering to to folks who who really can't safely uh, leave their homes. Um, you know, and one thing I want to I want to make sure that I don't miss is all this food being distributed by the charitable food system is great, and we're really glad that we're here. But the sustainable solution to hunger is Three Squares Vermont, the SNAP benefits, and formerly known as food stamps. Anyone who is out there who has lost, um, lost their job and lost significant income should really check to see if you're eligible for Three Squares Vermont. Again, you could go to our website, vtfoodbank.org to get more information or to the Department of Children and Families website. Um, but to, to be able to go to the grocery store and choose the foods that your family wants and needs um, is the most dignified and the healthiest way to get the foods um, onto your table. Uh, and we really encourage people to do that. Please look into that. So in addition to the challenges of uh, distributing the food and collecting the food and managing the food, I, I think you have an information issue here. A lot of people probably don't know about your services or, or the potential to, to get help. And that's you know, a consequence of the virus too. You're absolutely right, Dennis. And you know the the folks that we've been seeing, you know, at least 40, 45 percent increase. Um, many families and people who are now reaching out have never needed help before. You know, this hasn't happened in their lifetimes, and so they don't know how the system works. And there is a system out there, um, as as uh, inflexible and sometimes broken as it is, um, and so. People, you know, we've been doing these distributions that have been very well publicized with the National Guard um, and, uh, and, and the state as, as partners. Um, and we wanna make sure working with our friends at Hunger Free Vermont, that we're getting the information to people that they need for longer term, more sustainable solutions. You know, as much as I want to be optimistic, Dennis, I think that this is, um, the, the economic recovery here is, is going to be bumpy um, and possibly kind of slow. And I want to make sure that people are, are reaching out for assistance that can help them bounce back. Because we want people to bounce back from this. We don't want people to need to dig out. Um, so don't, don't think you need to dig yourself into that hole to expend all the resources you have before you reach out for help. Um, 
we want people to still have that cushion and for the, the assistance and the help that's out there is there for a reason. So I really encourage people to, to, um, to use it if they need it. Uh, before I forget, I understand you're having an event coming up uh, on August 1st, uh, point to point. Tell us. What yes, we are. So we've been doing this for, wow, 16 or 17 years. It's a bike ride to raise funds and awareness uh, for the work that the food bank and all of our partners around the state do to, to solve hunger. Um, it is virtual this year, so we won't be all, you know, eight or 900 people getting together and riding in a big group. Um, I ride every year and I'll be out there. I was actually on a training ride yesterday. Um, so you can go to um, uh, just Google point to point. Um, it's powered by VSECU, who's a tremendous partner. Um, and get out there and sign up for a ride and uh, raise some money for the food bank. And it's been a beautiful summer, you know, despite all the challenges we've had. And uh, it's, you know, bike riding is a very safe activity. So get out there, ride, or you can run also. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a fun way and an exciting way to, uh, to continue um, supporting the food bank and, uh, and supporting your neighbors. That's great. Well, how do you do that virtually? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to put on one of my old point to point jerseys and one of my numbers and get out there and all the routes are set and you can ride the route. And, and I've reached out to friends and family um, and gotten pledges to raise money for the food bank. And so then we'll all just get together and report back in on uh, how our rides went and uh, share our successes and our, our dramas and traumas. I get it. That's great. Well, we're running out of time, and I just want to make sure that uh, we uh, tell our viewers how they can help. Uh, what do you need, and how can they or their company or their organization or club uh, can help the food bank? Tell us what you need and how people can help. Yeah, you know, as I said, it, it just it's taking resources and tremendous resources to do this. So I would encourage people to go to our website, vtfoodbank.org. And actually, when you go there, you have two choices. If you need help, you click on one side and it will show you the resources. And again, I encourage everybody, you know, even if it would just help, even if you don't feel like you need it, think about, about you know, using the resources that are made available. And then the other side, if you're in a position to be able to help, to click on that and you can see opportunities to donate, you know, like you just said, you could ride in the in the point to point and have some fun and raise a little money. Um, and uh, volunteer there, there are um, opportunities to volunteer still. And so we're looking for people actually all over the state. Um, there's gleaning going on where we're working with farmers and going in their fields and, and picking produce and distributing that and then some of the food distributions that are happening. Um, and you know, I would just encourage people to, to take care of your neighbors, um, to have compassion for yourself um, and for others around you. And just, we need to take care of each other right now. That's great. I also want to add that you also say, give your voice. And some people like to write letters to the editor or write letters to officials. How can people help in that? What do you need from officialdom on all levels? You know, we need, we need the, the state and the federal government to recognize that hunger is a significant issue, particularly with COVID-19. One of the things right now is, is that we're, we're in the next relief bill coming out of Washington, and there will be one. Um, we're really encouraging um, our congressional delegation and really um, people, members of Congress across the country to support an increase in the Three Squares Vermont or SNAP benefits. Because you know, even though you're, if you're eligible, you get the EBT card, you can go to the grocery store and shop, um, the benefits are too low um, to really give people the opportunity to buy the, uh, the nourishing, healthy food that are gonna sustain them through this um, very, very stressful time. Um, I know that our congressional delegation all support increased SNAP benefits, but it never hurts for them to hear from their constituents. Um, I would also encourage people to the extent that you're communicating with candidates for office. It is an election time. Um, if whether it's a, a virtual um, candidate gathering or a fundraiser or just a, a, a question on a website, um, to ask 
the candidates what their, what their plan is to make sure that people in Vermont have enough food to eat um, through, this, through this crisis and into the future. Um, you know, it, it really is about people not having the financial resources to purchase food. There is plenty of food out there. Um, so how are the candidates going to support making sure that, that every Vermont table um, has three meals of nourishing food every day? That's great. Well, thank you very much. And uh, uh, this is uh, Dennis McMahon. My guest today has been John Sales, the CEO of the Vermont Food Bank. And thank you for watching Positively Vermont. And thank you, John, for giving us such a wonderful explanation of the wonderful and vital work that you do.